Welcome back. Part 3 of our correlation and regression introduction. We're currently talking about linear regression and we were looking at the kind of at the equation basically that shows the all, all of the information filled in. We have our dependent variable, our independent variable, our y-intercept that's b sub 0 and our regression coefficient that's b sub 1. And we were starting to explain in a little more detail each of those parts. So b sub 0 that's this, is the estimated average value of y, that's the test scores, when the value of x, those are the computer costs, is zero. So if computer costs are zero, it's in the range of observed x values. In our case, no computers were free. So our b sub zero just indicates that for students within the range of computer costs observed, 98.24833 is the portion of the student test scores not explained by computer costs. In other words, regardless of computer costs, if we just take this whole thing out, this is what test scores are. So this number tells us what's explained by everything that is not this. If we take one more step over and we look at the regression coefficient, b sub 1, that measures the estimated change in the average value of y as a result of a one unit change in x. So here, 0 0.10977 tells us that the average value of students' test scores increases by 0 0.10977 on average for each additional one unit of computer cost. Now, the, the random coefficient, the unexplained variance, that part, the E, the error, right? We have to talk about that a little bit because that's, that's uh, how we get our estimation of how much uh, our linear part of our equation is really explaining about the dependent variable. And we can do that by saying, all right, first of all, we know that the sum of the residuals from the least squares regression line is zero. So if we plot it and we look at all the different points that we plot and then we add up all of these differences from the regression line, these are all going to be negative on this side, these are all going to be positive on this side. They're going to balance each other out so that the result is zero. The sum of the squared residuals is a minimum. So this regression line is going to be plotted in a way that the difference between each of these values, each of these points, and the regression line is the smallest one possible. So that's why the sum of squared residuals is a minimum. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and the simple regression line always passes through the mean of the y variable and the mean of the x variable. In other words, again, if we're plotting this, the mean of y is somewhere here, the mean of x is somewhere here. So where they intersect there, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter, but at some point the regression line is going to pass through both. It will never, let me, let me use a different color for this. Oh, let's go blue. The regression line will never do this where it doesn't pass through the mean of y. Or it will never do this where it doesn't pass through the mean of x. And then finally, the least squares coefficients are unbiased estimates of uh, the y-intercept and the regression coefficient. All right. So where does that lead us? Well, here we're getting into some of the conceptualization behind the regression. And, and I'm, I'm talking to you about this simply because I want you to think about what's going on behind the scenes rather than just looking at the coefficients that are spit out. This is a better way to understand what we're looking at. Eventually we want to talk about the R squared, the coefficient of determination. And remember the R squared, R squared, tells us the amount of variation in the dependent variable that all the stuff on the independent variable side of the equation explain. And we get that by looking at these sums of squares. And there are different ones that we can consider. The total sum of squares, that's what we talked about before, every uh, value subtracted from the mean and squared. The sum of squares error, 
thing. So that is the estimate, the, I'm sorry, that is the observed values of the dependent variable subtracted, or then you subtract the estimated value of y for every given value of x, and then you square that, and that shows you the error. And then we have the sum of squares regression, which is when you take the estimated value of y for the given value of x, you subtract the average value of y of the dependent variable and you square that. So total sum of squares measures the variation of all the individual values around their mean. The error sum of squares or the sum of squares error uh, is the variation attributable to factors other than the relationship between x and y. And the sum of squares regression, or regression sum of squares, explains the variation attributable to the relationship between x and y. What does that look like? All right, so here's our regression line, just like before. <clears throat> the total sum of squares, this, is everything between the mean of y and the observed value of y. Okay. The sum of squared errors is everything between the observed value of y and the estimated value of y given the value of x. And the sum of squares regression is the difference between the estimated value of y given the value of x and the mean of y. All right. So we're trying to look at how much our independent variable explains our dependent variable. Right? That's what we're trying to look at. How much does x explain variation in y? Well, we know the total variation in y, and we know how much variation in y is explained up into the estimated value of y when we know x. Right? This stuff is what we're missing. This is the error. This is what is not being measured or estimated by x. So the coefficient of determination is the portion of the total variation in the dependent variable that is explained by variation in the independent variable. We also call it the r-squared. It's denoted as r-squared, and it's a ratio. Sum of squares regression divided by sum of squares total. Sum of squares regression divided by sum of squares total. We're looking at this part divided by this part. It's a proportion. You're looking at this divided by this. It gives you a, a proportion, which you can then multiply by 100, and it will give you how much variation in y is explained by x. That's it. Sum of squares explained by regression divided by the total sum of squares. That's your r squared. What does that look like? Well, if it's a perfect relationship, perfect linear relationship, r squared will be 1 negative 1 or plus 1, it would be 1. 100% okay. of the variation in y is explained by variation x if this is the case. Now, when we have a weaker linear relationship, we end up with something like this. In this case, r squared is somewhere between 0 and 1. Some, but not all, of the variation in y is explained by the variation in x. If we have absolutely no variation in y explained by variation in x, it looks like this. It's flat. There's no relationship. And when we look at our output, we're going to get an r squared value. In this case, it's actually showing us in our ANOVA uh, what the different components are. So the sum of squares regression is right here. And look, you put it right there. The sum of squares total is right here. Look, you put it right there. You divide the sum of squares regression by the sum of squares total. Lo and behold, you get the r squared, which is the same thing reported here. This simply means, remember it's a proportion, so you multiply it by 100 to get the percentage. 58.8% of the variation in test scores is explained by variation in computer costs. That's more than half of the variation in test scores being explained by variation in computer costs. It's not bad, actually. Okay, we have talked about regression. 
I'm going to pause here and we're going to come back and talk about how we actually do this using SPSS. And like magic, we have now <laughs> converted to looking at the uh, screen. Uh, let me just move this up a little bit so you can see uh, better. We're now looking at our uh, Magic Presto screen from SPSS. Sorry, that's not the technical name, that's just me joking. And this is the variable view. I've already put in the variable, one called uh, test scores and the other called computer costs. Same ones we were using in the example earlier. If we look at the data, you can see that I've inserted the, the same data that was in the data set that I showed you uh, in the examples earlier. It's all the same stuff. So all we want to do is perform a regression. We know that test scores are the dependent variable, computer costs are the independent variable. So we will analyze, we will do regression, we will do linear. Okay. Test scores are dependent. Computer costs are independent. I'm not going to mess with this down here. And I'm going to say OK. And just like that, we have our regression. Um, and I'm just moving it down a little bit so we can see everything. We can see what we entered. Our independent variables are computer costs. Our dependent variables are test scores. Our R squared, just like it was before, is 0 0.581, 58% of the variation in test scores is explained by computer costs. We have our sum of squares from our ANOVA. We know that they are significantly uh, different cases in our data set and we can use this 18934 divided by 32600. Lo and behold turns out to be 0.581. And if we look down here we find the same thing we found before our unstandardized coefficient, that's what we want to look at here, is 0 0.110 and if we were to drag that out a little bit it would be 0 0.109 blah 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 like we had in our example. And here we have it. It has also calculated our, our test statistic looking at whether or not we have a significant uh, estimate of test scores using computer costs and we do because our significance value as less than 0 0.05 um, really everything is working out exactly the way that we hoped that it would uh, and you can see that it was very fast there really is not much to it as long as you uh, do the analyze regression linear and you put the right dependent variable in and the right independent variable in and click OK which we already did you're going to get this and it will calculate it very quickly for most computer sets data sets pardon me it's only when you have a data set that is you know 500,000 or more uh, cases that it takes just a, a few seconds longer All right. now you know everything there is to know at least about the beginnings of correlation and regression and hopefully you're able to conduct both using your own uh, SPSS and your own machine and you will understand how to um, interpret the coefficients you know what this constant is right that's b sub zero that's the y-intercept 98.2 and you know what the correlation coefficient is itself that's b sub 1 0 0.110 you know what to make of the sum of squares and why we care you know how to interpret the r squared 58 percent of the variation in test scores is explained by computer costs Feeling pretty good about life. All right.